Okay, this EEG today is a 61-year-old man with a history of syncope. So when we first start looking, we want to go ahead and orient ourselves and make sure that we understand what montage we're looking at. So looking over here, we can see this is the left parasagittal chain, the right parasagittal, the left and right temporal, and this is going down a vertex. So this is a double banana montage. Over here on the left are the technician's comments, and up here we can just see we're at our regular settings. Uh, the, fil the filters are between 1 and 70 hertz. We've got our notch filter on, and we're at our standard sensitivity and time bases. All right, so as we start going through this EEG, the first thing we want to look at is the background activity. And we want to go ahead and look at the features of the background that we talked about in the first video. Now, when we count up the background frequency here, it's about 10 hertz. And a little trick here you can do is, you know, this is one second, and this green grid line here, between here and here, that's 0.2 seconds. So if you just count this uh, number of waves in that area and multiply that by 5 that'll give you um, the background frequency so that's 2 times 10 or I'm sorry 2 times 5 equals 10 and so that's kind of a shortcut to find out your background frequency so you don't have to constantly be counting these waves okay so our background frequency is 10 Hertz and that's normal and the next thing we want to look at is the background amplitudes and we can go ahead and measure with our measuring tool here and if we look here we see the voltage is about 37 microvolts is the largest and the smallest one's probably about 10 so we would say between 10 and 40 microvolts and then we want to look at the symmetry between the sides and first the symmetry in terms of the frequency is equal so it looks nice and symmetric the symmetry with the amplitudes looks equal as well and the next thing we want to look at is the organization of the EEG. Now we look at the frequency amplitude gradient and again in the front part of the head we see lower amplitude and faster frequency activity. As we move toward the back of the head we see the amplitude getting larger and we see the frequency slowing down. So this is a very nicely organized EEG. Very nice. The other thing we want to look at is the reactivity and here's a beautiful um, example of our posterior dominant rhythm. We see the eyes opening and we see attenuation of the background and that means that this patient's EEG is reactive to eye opening. The eyes are blinking here. We can see these eye blinks and then we see the eyes close and our posterior dominant rhythm is back. Now again, um, the eyes we are able to see the deflections here on the EEG because the eyes are charged, the cornea is positively charged, and so when the patients blink, the eyeballs actually go back in the head and the electrodes are picking up that, that charge. All right, so again, we're just seeing more um, attenuation of the background with the eyes blinking and more nice posterior dominant rhythm here. It looks nice and symmetric. And now the patient is hyperventilating, and we're going to see if we see a hyperventilation response here. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, hyperventilation, um, we're looking for epileptiform abnormalities, usually in patients with primary generalized epilepsy. But that would be very rare in someone at, at this age. Usually we see that in children with absence epilepsy. So we can also see what's called a buildup, which is... Um, high amplitude slow waves during hyperventilation and that again usually happens in the young. We're not really seeing much here. The patient's hyperventilating but the background looks unchanged. Now the techs usually have the patients hyperventilate for three minutes and so now this says HV end. We're seeing a lot of artifact here, lots of muscle movement, um, little eye blinks here. We're st we still see the background. This patient's eyes are closed but they're just doing the muscle movements so of the blinking. Here. and a lot of eye movements. This is just, you know, eye movements back and forth. All right, so now the patient's relaxing a little bit here. And again, just nice symmetric background. We're keeping our eyes out here for any asymmetries, any epileptiform abnormalities. We see a little bit of a change here. You can sort of see this 
um, activity here. And if we change the filter to also pick up activity that's less than one hertz. Oh, sorry about that. We'll let, let that go by. Um, if we change the low field filter here, now we're seeing slower activity as well. We can really see these slow back and forth eye movements. So that's just horizontal eye movements. That's often the very first sign of drowsiness. And that's really the first sign we see here. We're still seeing the posterior dominant rhythm, but right here you can see that change in the EEG. Look at the difference between this part and this part. So here we see the nicely organized posterior dominant rhythm. Then we see loss of that normal background and loss of that frequency amplitude gradient. So this is drowsiness. And here we see that the background comes back. Now I want to point out that you can also see this change when the patient opens their eyes, but we don't see any eye opening here. The eyes are closed. We don't see any eye blinks. And so this is drowsiness. And then the patient's waking up, and again, we don't see an eye movement, an eye blink. So this is not eye closure. That's the, pa the patient is waking up a little bit. And as we go forward, we can just continue to see, you know, wakefulness. There's a little bit of drowsiness here wakefulness, a lot of this horizontal eye movements, and lots of similar activity here, and little eye blinks, lots of blinking here. So far it looks normal, we don't really see anything unexpected. Again, just normal background, very drowsy on this half of the page. And here we see something a little bit different. Now, if you look at this page, something should stand out. We see this different looking activity here. And the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, what is this and where is this? So what is it? It looks like, you know, it's standing out. It's um, somewhat blunted looking, sharpish looking waves. And they're in the parasagittal region. They're bilateral. And if we change the montage to look at a transverse montage, now this gives us um, a nice look at sleep activity because it's going across the head um, instead of um, going front to back like we do in a double banana. This is going across the head. And so we're seeing here, this is the midline. These waves are pointing at each other at the midline here and here. If I move this over, we can see this wave and this wave are pointing at each other and the common electrode is CZ. So that is called a phase reversal. And there's a phase reversal here at PZ. So these are phase reversing at the midline. So that means the midline is the area of, um, you know, where the, of where that activity is generated. These are called vertex waves. We see these in stage N1 sleep or drowsiness. They're sharp looking waves at the midline that are bilateral during drowsiness. So let's go ahead and go back to our double banana montage. And so we saw those poorly formed. They're not the greatest looking vertex waves. We'll see better ones hopefully later or in another EEG. Then we see the background coming back. And there's an, here's another one here. This is a vertex wave, and maybe this wants to be a sleep spindle after it here. It's not very well formed, but it's kind of a sad little spindle there. Again, more horizontal eye movements going back and forth. And just kind of going in and out of drowsiness. And some more vertex waves here. A little bit better formed there. And we can see them nicely in these um, electrodes down here that are going down the midline so we can see those sharp waves vertex they're called vertex sharp waves they're not epileptiform because they're normal they're normal brain activity but they are technically sharp waves because they meet the definition of a sharp wave they're pointing at each other they have the morphology of a sharp wave, but they're not epileptiform. And that's an important point in EEG is that not everything that's sharp is epileptiform. It's very important to learn that many normal findings in EEG are sharp. And it's important to learn what those are so that you do not overread um, EEGs and call things epileptiform when in fact they're normal variants that just appear sharp. 
sometimes these vertex sharp waves do appear in trains and they can look pretty scary and and so they can get misread as epileptiform but this is again just a train of vertex waves and then the patient's waking up and some more vertex waves here and as we go on we're looking for stage clear stage N2 sleep we saw that little um, sleep spindle earlier but let's see if we can find some more some clear-cut nice examples of sleep spindles now the patient's awake so here we have a K complex so this is a vertex wave with a spindly little thing after it and that's one of the two types of K complexes as I mentioned before, there are two types. There's the vertex wave with the sleep spindle following it, and then there's another type of K-complex. It's just a high amplitude delta wave that you see in all of the leads. And here's another one here. Vertex wave with a little spindle after it. So we're in stage N2 sleep now, which uh, one of the techs or one of the fellows noted here. Oh, here's a really nice example of a vertex wave with a spindle. So that's a K-complex. All right, and looks like we've got uh, thought the patient. I thought that was going to be a K-complex, but it's really just the patient waking up. And it looks like the tech might have woken the patient up here, um, probably to start the photic stimulation, which is starting here. And so again, the technician flashes the light at different frequencies. And the posterior dominant rhythm often fires at the same frequency as the light. But whether or not this occurs is not really relevant and it's not abnormal in either case. What we're looking for, again, are abnormal responses called photoparoxysmal responses. So that would be, for example, generalized spike wave discharges in response to the flash. And we're not seeing anything like that. So again, lots of eye movements here, little blinks, and another example of reactivity, the eyes open, we see attenuation of the background, and it's over. So that's a normal EEG in the awake, drowsy, and sleep states with no epileptiform activity seen.